Hey, this is Noe, and today we'll be discussing and breaking down Jan Van Eyck's Arnold Feeney wedding portrait. But first, let me give you an idea of who Van Eyck was in terms of his career, where he is from, and what he may have looked like. So this painting right here is actually his portrait of a man. And it is speculated that this is a self-portrait, and we have a few clues thinking so. And when translated, it reads... Alishka, or as I can. So for that reason alone, it is believed that this is a self-portrait, and Nick has always found a way to cameo himself in every one of his artworks, and that's usually done by a signature. So this is what he may have looked like, but some basic facts according to the Web Gallery of Art. He could have been born around 1390 in a village named Messayek. Messayek. So you probably don't know where that is, and I will show you. So first, here is the actual wedding portrait. First, it is... Very well detailed, so detailed in fact, that you can zoom in on Arnold Fini's hat and you can tell it is a straw hat dyed black. And let me show you for a bit. So it was very detail oriented and his oil paints allowed him to achieve this level of detail. And this is in the 1400s, so this was very uncommon and pretty revolutionary. So there is a lot of symbolism within this portrait. And I'll start by saying that Arnold Fini is very rich. He could actually afford a large bed like that, and in the 1400s, most people slept on hay bales. And I will move on to the chandelier. Now, the chandelier, well, I'll just have to zoom in on it for a bit. Taking a closer look at the chandelier, the arms of the chandelier have this very elaborate design. And uh, the material seems to be made out of brass, which is actually very expensive at the time, and very hard to forge, as you wouldn't want to heat the brass too much, as it would just melt away. Or you don't want it to run to be forged too cold, because now it would just crack. Also, keep in mind that for lighting, all you would have is a candle and an iron plate that would be hammered into the wall. Also, keep in mind that for lighting, all you would have is a candle and an iron plate that would be hammered into the wall. Something like this would be your typical home lighting, and this would be the best example I could find. Now, I would like to discuss their attire. Now, Arnolfini being a wool merchant, of course, he would have the best wool that he could possibly get. And it took many squirrels and weasels to make that the edges of those coats. Okay, so now that you have gotten familiar with this portrait, the main controversy with it is that it could either be a wedding portrait or a death tribute. Okay, so my personal belief is that it started out as a wedding portrait but then was later revised to be a death tribute picture. And I will break down the symbolism and iconography within the portrait and give you context on the requirements for marriage. So the first rule for declaring a marriage, and really the only rule, is you needed one witness. As long as one person witnessed the declaration of marriage, you were considered a married couple. You did not need a priest a marriage license or any formal documentation to declare a marriage. You just needed one witness and that was it. Also take note of Tsunami's dress, the color green. Green is indicative of fertility. Also take note in the way she holds her dress. She holds it in such a way that makes her look pregnant. Really she is not. This is just a common thing for women to do in the 1400s. I will also mention that Arnolfini has his shoes off. And that really indicates that he is on holy ground. And I will mention that the dog represents loyalty. Now getting back to a chandelier game, that one lit candle means God is watching, or it represents the eye of God. But note that it takes a stand on the left side, and on the right side there is a burnt out candle. This will come into play later. Now looking into the mirror, if you look really closely, you see a figure in blue. That figure in blue is actually the painter himself, Ick. 
And if you recall, the one rule for marriage is you need one witness. And apparently, Ick is the witness to this marriage. Okay, so that is why it could be a wedding portrait, but it could also be a death tribute picture. And I'll just start with Arnold Fee's face. Now, looking closely at Arnold Fee's face, his facial expression is very uh, uh, sad or melancholy. And also, the lighting from the left side of his face just makes it seem a bit darker. Now, I'm just going to switch over to Tsunami's face. You'll see it is much brighter and idealized. Now, if you look at Tsunami's face, she has a bit of a happier look. Also, the physics of light don't really apply to her. And this just means she's been idealized. Looking back at the dog, it wasn't uncommon in the 1400s that little statues of dogs would be placed at a woman's grave or be drawn at the feet of a woman. And this was usually done after a woman has passed away. Notice how on the left side of the chandelier, the candle is still lit. And on the right side, the candle wax has been melted down. And usually when someone passes away, it is noted that their candle has been blown out, meaning they are no longer living. Historical records also show that Tsunami has died in 1433, and this painting happened in, be painted in 1434, one year after Tsunami's death. Gentlemen, it was way too detailed to let this slip by. This detail was done on purpose. Another dead giveaway, no pun intended, is the crucifixion of Christ depicted around the mirror. On the right side, it is showing his death, and on the left side, it is showing the story of the crucifixion when he was living, by Giovanni's side. That concludes the breakdown of this portrait. Now I'll move on to my own personal artwork that I have created, and it has to do with the topic of marriage. Okay, so in my personal artwork, I wanted to depict the dying tradition of marriage, how newer couples are not getting married, but they're still having children together. Now. If you see the church that I have drawn on the top, I tried to make it look very withered and old. And if you see on the doorway, it should be a foreclosure sign or a closure document. Now looking down at the generic figures I have drew, I tried to depict that older folk have a long lasting marriage. And I tried to use a bit of simple symbolism to depict that by drawing two rings stacked on top of each other and drawing a knot, hence the saying, tying the knot. Looking in the second family of the family tree, you can see that, that a piece of their ring finger is missing. I drew that on purpose to depict the fact that the wedding ring no longer has its meaningful definition. Even though they are not married, they still have children, which is a growing trend in modern day. One final detail is the amount of shading I used from the early generation to the later ones. The darker shading represents the values of, of the great-grandparents, and the middle generation has changed values from the previous generation, but still having a similar basis. And the third generation has lost all the values from the grandparents, and they have completely changed.